I head southwest toward a favorite spot, an uncharted island with many different kinds of fish on its shores and reefs. I'm looking forward to the time, and imagine I'll have enough fish to stock the freezer by the time I'm done. I turn off the engines and drop anchor at about the halfway point. I can see a school of tuna on the fish finder, so I bait up with anchovy and cast. I have two tuna in the boat within ten minutes. I cast again, but in the distance I see something strange. I feel a tuna strike and reel as I try to determine what I see. Just as I get the tuna in the boat, I realize it's not a fish in the distance. It's a boat, like hundreds of other little boats that play in the surf up and down the coast. This one, however, is upside down. I quickly stow my knives and rod and steam ahead to the boat. As I approach, I see a jagged hole on one side of it. I glance toward a rocky shoal a few hundred yards distant and frowned. Ahoy! Was anyone there? Is anyone hurt? There's no answer, so I shut off the motor. The seas are calm, so I dive into the water and quickly look for survivors. The boat and surrounding water are empty, but I see the bright orange speck of a life vest when I surface. I quickly board my boat and head in the direction of the speck. The person in the vest had drifted nearly a half mile away, and it's a few minutes before I reach him. Reach her. The person in the life vest is a woman. Easily the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Now is not the time to think about that. She is unconscious. She's likely been out here for hours. I quickly stop the boat and dive into the water to pull her aboard. I've used my military training to save lives before. I'm grateful for a chance to put that training to use. The woman is alive, but barely. She's conscious, but incoherent. Exhaustion, exposure, and dehydration have made her delirious. She mumbles something about Devon, and I feel a pang of disappointment at the thought that the owner of that name is likely her husband or boyfriend. Now is not the time to think about that. It's hard not to because the life jacket is the only thing she's wearing. She took advantage of the boat to get all the sun she needed. She's perfect. She is beyond perfect. What I thought was perfect before pales compared to the goddess I see before me. It seems almost like a Greek myth. The hero sailor rescues the drowning goddess, and they fall in love, have a passionate romance, and do marvelous deeds together. She coughs, and a trickle of seawater comes out, and I realize I'm staring at her instead of helping her. I quickly turn her on her side, and she coughs again, this time spewing out seawater. I watch for blood as she voids her lungs and stomach. There's nothing. She's asleep now, breathing more easily. I relax a little, clean her up, and set her on some sheets. Sorry, sails. Canvas sheets aren't the softest material, but it's better than the deck, and I can bring her below to the salon after giving her some water. I open my canteen and put it to her lips, but her head lolls listlessly. Not good. I cradle her head and gently pour some water into her mouth. Her swallowing reflex kicks in, and I give her a few sips of water before she fades into sleep again. I take the canteen downstairs and set up a pillow and a blanket on the sofa. I return to the deck for the girl and found her stirring awake again, her eyes open and her gaze is clear. And I am in love. 